All right, so now I can show you the next part. So here is the class. Um, you've got quizzes and some discussions you have to do uh, on the Canvas website, but the moral heart of the class is the hands-on projects. That's what most people really want to do. So you click projects at the top of this page, and there's a page just with the project. So um, you'll find these, the, I do these, use these at uh, conferences where they're running an automated scoring system. So they'll find flags, but at City College, you capture an image and turn in the image in Canvas to get points. It's not an automated scoring system. That way we can see what you're doing and try to help you if you get stuck. Okay, the main issue is what kind of computer you have. Um, Find a solution, the book we need. No, uh, the book we're using is this one here, the, web, the Mobile Application Hacker's Handbook. That's the one. Anyway, um, so the first thing you have to do is get an Android emulator set up. And that's why you don't need to buy anything, but you do need to run an Android emulator, which is a, a virtual machine, essentially. The problem is it depends on your operating system. If you have a Mac or Linux, your life will be much easier because you can use Jenny Motion, and Jenny Motion is wonderful. So, but if you have Windows, you'll have to have two different emulators and you'll have to switch back and forth between them because each one of them only has um, part of the information you need. And yes, all these uh, sessions will be available on my website. Uh, you will see if you go to 128 and go to the schedule, I'm gonna put the videos right here. So you can view them anytime you want. And that's why you don't need to attend class live. You can just watch the videos later if you like. It's a good question. Anyway, so I want to just talk about these. So you have to set up an emulator, and then you'll set up burp to intercept traffic. And then you can do things like examine flaws like plain text login. So I'm using a Mac, which is the easiest way to do it. And so I download and install this product called Jenny Motion. And in Jenny Motion, you can just create some devices, any kind of device you want. I've created a Google Nexus 6 phone running Android 5, which is a pretty old version of Android but it'll work for what we're doing. And it really doesn't much matter which phone you have or which version of Android you have. For most of the projects, any version will do. But when you double click this thing, it will launch the virtual machine. What this is doing is running VirtualBox and it's simulating it, it and it's running a virtual environment where Android is running. And Android can be compiled for different hardware. And this Android has actually been compiled to run on x86, which is what this emulator is emulating. So you have a phone here. And so um, let me move this page over a little. There we go. All right, so to set this up, you just go here and you'll find instructions. This shows you where to download this. It shows you how to install Google Play um, so you can uh, put apps on it. When you first get it, it doesn't have Google Play on it. You have to go here. And right now that button is broken. So you have to go download it from a separate website. But anyway, you can get the Google Play Store installed on your phone. And then you can go to Google Play and put apps on the phone from there. Now, mine is strangely not opening up for me here. Looks like I might get to demonstrate some debugging too. Let's see if this thing... Um, I think I'm just going to close it and start it again because it should have been faster than that. I just set this up right before class. And if it's going to irritate me by not working, it may file up my demonstration. There. And where is my desktop? That's good. The color sweeping across, that's what I should see. Okay, it's not dead. Don't know why it's uh, being so slow though. It's plenty fast early. It might be that Zoom is hogging up some resources on my uh, desktop. I'm gonna try moving it to another monitor. Yeah, okay. It doesn't like to open on the monitor that's being shared. Okay. As far as I know, any Android tablet would be fine. Okay, so now I got in. Okay, so some, it kind of has an interaction with Zoom. So now you have a phone. And so if you click this round button, it'll show you all the apps on your phone. And I don't have very many on this phone. 
And then you have the Play Store, which you have to download and drag on the phone and install and then restart it. And then you got Google Play. You have to log in with a Google account. You can make a new account or use any account you like. And uh, yes, maybe I have to move somewhere. I have to move somewhere to launch an app. How annoying. All right. All right. Anyway, so you can launch Google Play and then you can search in here for things. And so once you've got it on there, you can use apps. And the one I'm going to use is this one here, Equity Pandit, the one I was picking on earlier. This is a fantastic app. This app alone demonstrates almost every flaw we're going to study in this course. These guys are the worst app in the world. So you install this thing. And we're using the latest version right from their website, because even though I tell them, they don't care and they never update their stuff. So I've already got it installed. And by the way, if you don't want to keep reaching there, you can drag it around and drop it onto your home page. And then you have this thing called Equity Pandit. So what I've done here is if you go to the projects, M101 is to just get your emulator running. And so I've done that one. We don't need to do burp right now today. We can go to this one called plain text login. And uh, this one shows you what to do. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to watch this app run and see what it does to the network. And we're going to use Wireshark. You could use Burp, but I'm, for this one, I'm using Wireshark because all I want to do is see the network traffic. I do not need to modify it any. Now, when you launch Wireshark, Wireshark is just a tool that lets you see the raw network traffic going through your adapter. And you might have a lot of network adapters like I do, but one of them is the one that goes to the internet. And that's my USB one here. So when I click that, I see all this traffic going by, and that's all my Zoom traffic and other things. Now, these days, almost everything is encrypted. So you can put a filter here of HTTP and press Enter, and now it's quiet because that's unencrypted web traffic. And nobody uses unencrypted web traffic very much anymore, but these guys do. So if I go to Launch Equity Pandit, and I think I've learned I have to move it off this screen to launch it. Yep, there it is. All right. So if I go here, here I am with Equity Pandit. And if I create an account, then I can put in a name. Um, yeah, you need to run these apps in either a real Android machine or in an emulator like this. And the emulators are free. So what I assume you're probably going to do, most people, is just run them in an emulator. So my name is going to be test CCSF, just any kind of name and any kind of email. It doesn't have to be a real one. And then a password, I'll just use password 22 and password 22. Okay, and now I'm going to sign up. Oops, okay, it doesn't like my password. Okay, password 22 and password 22. Sign up. Okay, and there you go, sending a bunch of unencrypted data over the internet. It sent a post here to check login, and then it sent a post to add user. And if I right click that and follow the TCP stream, it will show me here what I've got. And this is awfully small, so I'm going to copy it and put it in a text editor so I can make it bigger just so you can see it on the video. All right, so here's a plain text editor and there's the text, which hmm, don't look like I got it all, all right? In just a moment, I'm gonna highlight it, right click, copy, okay. Paste, there we are, and now I can make this bigger. There we go. So this is the request that it sent up to the server. A post going to a place called add user PHP. And down here, here's my email, testccsf at aol.com. And here's my password, password 22. So it sent all that with no encryption over the internet, which is a bad policy. And as we're going to see in later projects, this app, in fact, does a lot of other terrible things as well. But one of the many terrible things is when you first create your account, it sends your password unencrypted over the internet up to their server. So that's what you do here. And we're going to do more later. But hopefully that should get you started. Now, if you're using a PC, you have to go here first. 
and start by making a Kali virtual machine and then put on BlueStacks and Knox, which are two Windows-based emulators, which together will be enough to get the features we need. You can run Jenny Motion on a PC, but in my uh, when I tested it before, it doesn't run well enough to actually get our projects done. So what did work was Bluetax and Knox together, which are two different emulators for Windows. So anyway, you should uh, start setting up an emulator on your machine. And uh, that's what we'll use. Most of the class, we're just going to be playing with Android apps and the Android operating system in these emulators. And uh, then eventually later, we're going to be taking apart the Bank of America app and other apps and modifying them and defeating their defenses, seeing how they work, going inside uh, how Android apps talk to each other. And then we have a series of projects playing with iPhones where you're really going to need an iPhone you can jailbreak. And uh, I find I buy used iPhones for about 40 bucks online or 50 bucks and they work. Um, model 5S to 10 are the iPhones you need. And so use the check rain exploit and jailbreak your phone. And then you can see inside to see what your iPhone does. But there is no emulator available for this. Um, the only emulator that exists is really expensive and tied up in legal problems and stuff. So uh, the only way I know to do this is to get a real phone. But a cheap used phone works. And I'll have some um, to loan people to later in the class. I'm going to buy another bunch of them. But if that's why this is all extra credit. You don't have to do it. Uh, if you don't have an iPhone and you don't want to get one, you can get enough points. There's a lot of extra credit in this class. So if you can't do one project, you can just skip it and go to another. If you create your own account with Facebook or Google+, Plus, will they also show up in plain text? Um, that's a very good question, and I do not know. I didn't test it. Um, I would like to say no, because the whole point of those buttons is that you should use OAuth. And OAuth should send your password only to that company but there are some OAuth flaws. If you take the web application class, we're going to talk about some things that can go wrong with OAuth. But normally, if you use like this Facebook button, then Equity Panda never sees your password at all. Like, if, let's try it. If I do this, it should take me away from them over to Facebook. And Facebook should um, not be encrypting stuff. So actually, let's take a look right here. This is a very good question. We can try it live. Let me go back to clear this filter. Okay, and there's all the traffic. Now let's go to HTTP again. HTTP, okay. And I'm gonna delete the old traffic, so I'm gonna stop capturing and restart again. Okay, so now there's no HTTP traffic. And so if I log in here with some stuff like, I guess that's like a phone number, and here's a password, just a bunch of random junk. Whoa, and then log in. Whoa, stop that. Okay, I hit the login, and it made it in, and it didn't send any HTTP traffic. So I think that's the point. Um, I think this is a real Facebook website. So Facebook won't let you do this. So it doesn't face and see the way these login buttons work is the equity padded app would never see your password, only Facebook would see your password, and then it would send a token back to the app an OAuth token, which does not include your password. And that's all the app would have is a token which says that Facebook uh, is asserting that you have proven who you are. Must the iPhone be activated? Um, no, I don't think so. You don't need an account. You don't need a data plan. You can connect right to um, just a Wi-Fi connection. That's all I do. If I'm going to use my phone for the labs. Do I need to change any of the Wireshark configuration? Um, no, I don't think so. Well, if you're going to use your phone, then uh, yes, there will be a problem up there. You won't be able to see the traffic. So uh, you will have an issue of putting a device in the middle to pick up the traffic. Um, yeah, that's a good point. This particular, some of the, you might have an issue there. Um, what I've done before is I've used my computer as an access point. And that has turned out to be kind of a problem because the uh, internet connection share. Yeah, using your real device, you might have a problem. Um, but one thing you can do is you can use ADB. And you can see, so you're right, these network labs, you probably really need to use an emulator. Uh, it is possible to reroute the traffic from a real device through your computer, but it's quite difficult to set up. The only way I know to do it is using internet connection sharing. And 
On the Mac anyway, that feature keeps changing in every version and breaking. So it's frustrating. That's a good point. With a physical Android device, you probably have trouble with this one, but you'd be able to do all the ADB stuff. Like I say, one thing a lot of students suffer in this class is it depends on someone on their hardware. So if you find that you don't have the ability to set up some of these labs, just skip it and go on to the next. There's a lot of extra stuff. If you had Wireshark in promiscuous mode, both on the same Wi-Fi network, uh, would it work? And the answer is probably, uh, well, yes. Yes, I guess it would. That's a good question. I think that's right. If you had an unencrypted access point, if you turn off the encryption, it would work. If you have, um, you know, WPA on, I don't think it'll work. What Mac OS is needed, oh, I think it works on every modern Mac OS. Um, but let's take a look. Jenny Motion, um, it's a good question. I, here's Jenny Motion. And I guess they'll have like, uh, learn more. Um, someplace there, it's, uh, software. Here's Jenny Motion, um, desktop. Windows, Mac, and Linux. They claim it works on PC, by the way, so you can try that. Um, I don't know what version it needs. Works on multiple OSs. Yeah, they, they don't seem to be, that's a good question. I don't know the answer. In fact, maybe the Windows version is gonna work better these days. So if you Windows users, you might wanna try Jenny Motion on Windows and see if it works. It used to not work very well, but maybe they've updated it now. Yeah, these are good. Could you connect the phone to the Wireshark machine via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth? I have done that over Wi-Fi. Bluetooth didn't work very well, but I have done it over Wi-Fi. But uh, the problem is um, it, the only way to get to the internet after that was to um, use internet connection sharing. And that didn't work very well. But yeah, these are those are very good techniques and I've used all of them and they were all quite difficult to set up. Yeah, I've still them and I, I would get them set up and then as soon as I update anything, they break again. It's uh, pretty annoying. Anyway, Jenny Motion download. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, but you can totally get Jenny Motion and try it. Uh, I recommend getting an emulator to work even if you have a real physical device. They're both good. Um, all right, these are good questions. I'm going to stop this video and post it. Oh, it shows supported Mac versions. Oh, good. Let me take a look and see this link. The supported Mac versions, system requirements. Ah, here we go. Windows 8 or 10, Ubuntu. Uh, I don't see the Mac versions for some reason. Oh, here, no, that's Ubuntu. Well, they, they do tell us what Windows versions, but where's the Mac information? I'm somehow not sure. I passed it. It's right there up top. It's the top option. The top option. Right there. To the right. To, to the right a little bit. System requirements. Oh, that, but it doesn't tell you what version. I guess I'm supposed to believe. Yeah, well, yeah I, I, I bet it can only run on certain versions of OS, of Mac OS, but I don't know. Anyway. Um, it looks pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording and put this recording up. I'll stick around.